Welcome to The Zoomer. I'm Libby Snymer. In a world that often seems focused on material success and individual achievement, it can be easy to overlook the importance of happiness in our lives. Research has shown that happiness is a critical component of our overall well-being, affecting everything from our physical health and our relationships and even our productivity at work. But here's the thing. The more you chase happiness, the more elusive it can be. In recent years, Canada has consistently ranked as one of the happiest countries in the world. This year, of the 137 countries ranked, Canada placed at number 13, two positions higher than the United States. And although we can be proud of this achievement, we fail to be as joyous as the countries in positions 1 through 12, a list that includes Israel, Iceland, and Finland, the latter of which is the happiest place on earth. So what does it take and how can we learn from the world's happiest countries? We begin with Dr. Tal Ben Shahar, who taught the most popular course in the history of Harvard University and who is the creator of the world's first master's degree in happiness studies. Welcome, Dr. Ben Shahar. Thanks so much for being with us. Good to be here, Libby. Thank you for having me. So it all comes down to personal relationships, right? Number one predictor of happiness is quality time we spend with people we care about and who care about us. There are many misperceptions about relationships. First of all, that there are perfect relationships. There aren't. The best relationships have their ups and downs as well. Second, it's not like we meet the right person or best friend or ideal colleague, and then we live happily ever after. That just happens in fairy tales. In real life, we need to invest to work on the relationships. And that's key. And that's key for happiness in general. We don't just receive it. We have to work for it. And how important is it for these to be deep relationships, meaningful relationships? We need both. We need the, um, the, the fair weather relationships uh, at times, you know, the, 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 the highs. Um, at the same time, we also need the intimate relationships where we can open up. And that can happen with our relationships with uh, a romantic partner, a uh, family, uh, our friends. It can also happen at work. So deep, intimate relationships where we open up, we, where we are authentic, where we feel comfortable being ourselves are very important for happiness. You know, it's interesting. One of the things that we learned during the pandemic was the most casual relationships. You know, the, the person who hands us the bread at the bakery or, or a cup of coffee, that those relationships are really important too. Uh, absolutely. You know, work by uh, Professor Barbara Fredrickson from uh, UNC shows that every time we experience what she calls positivity resonance, which is basically experiencing the same positive emotion together. So it could be, you know, looking at a, at a, at a puppy running and then looking at one another and smiling. That is a manifestation of love. That is the physiological equivalent of experiencing love. So every time we smile at someone and they smile back at us, these are important experiences for our overall well-being. What about gratitude? You say that is one of the keys. The word appreciate has two meanings. The first meaning of the word is to say thank you for something, to be grateful. But the word appreciate has a second meaning, which is to grow in value. You know, the money appreciates in the bank or in good times, the economy appreciates. The two meanings of the word appreciate are intimately intertwined because when we appreciate the good in our life, the good appreciates. We have more of it. And how important is it finally just to be happy with what we have? You know, th th this is, of course, um, a very important part of happiness, which is uh, acceptance and not acceptance in the form of resignation, but acceptance, for example, that uh, part of life is being sad, that part of life is uh, experiencing anger or envy or frustration or anxiety. And when we accept that these emotions are part of our constitution, that they're natural, we actually open ourselves up to more joy. 
in a sentence, the first step to happiness is really allowing in unhappiness. And now we turn to Mia Huti, founder of the Finnish Happiness Research Association. And the big question is, why is Finland the happiest country in the world? Uh, you wouldn't think that intuitively. <laughs> yes, we in, in our association are trying to understand the phenomenon of happiness. And it's not only the uh, feeling of happiness that, that people in Finland are not the happiest or the joyous, most joyous people in the world, but we, we feel safe, we feel uh, part of the society, we feel supported in our society, we feel uh, that um, we are connected to others. Everyone can trust that they are supported. For example, the unemployment support, pen pensions are, uh, and there are things that are securing our livelihood. We have been very equal uh, in in gender and in in ethnically also, and that's something that uh, supports our well-being and trust. And what about the access to nature? Oh. <laughs> we asked uh, Finns themselves that why do you think that Finland is the happiest country on earth? And uh, the majority of the people who answered said that it's the nature, it's the connection to the nature, it's the it's the pure nature, it's the uh, pure air that we breathe, it's the every man's rights. We can go and pick up blueberries and mushrooms everywhere. We can put a tent everywhere in the forest and we can be safe uh, there. And it's really something that people in Finland feel that is our asset and is really the source of our happiness. We need to take a short break, but when we come back, we're going to get everyone laughing with <laughs> happiness. Laughologist Albert <laughs> Nuremberg is here. See you when we return. <laughs> 